Howdy, I'm CyberWorks with Alumnusly Crafted, and today we're talking about life again. We're going to be talking about being sick. Uh, a lot of people know I'm uh, pretty sick, and uh, I get a lot of questions about it, so I thought I would put a God video together. Not, not a God video, maybe exclamation video, maybe just something I could give you to say, hey, this is what CyberX is dealing with. So... I'm in my 40s, and every day I deal with horrible, debilitating stomach pain. Um, I've got other pains just from normal life of being old and pushing my body too much when I was younger. Um, but <clears throat> this is pretty debilitating to the point where I spend one to eight hours every morning and just bed rocking back and forth in horrible pain and so i feel very blessed and lucky to be alive and wake up every morning and some people say man cyber you have a lot of energy or a lot of uh motivation to uh always be doing and creating and being on the discord or streaming or making stuff and 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 why is that cyber x and well, part of that is because I'm running from death. And it's a funny thing when you uh, have to come to grips and face-to-face -face with death. And, you know, we all could die at any moment. <clears throat> we could all die of airplane. You know, a piece of um, the International Space Station just hit a house recently. Um, so you could literally just be sitting in your home at your computer now docking at earth spaceport <clears throat> and some uh s you know spaceship docks with a space station in space and all of a sudden you're dead <clears throat> um you know there's a lot of heart disease there's covid there's the vax issues there's countless problems going on and so because i've had to come to grips with my own mortality and my own issues it gives me a a different perspective every day i want to be a good steward of my day and i don't want god to take me away from this planet because i'm not being a good steward and i'm being lazy or i'm being <clears throat> um not faithful with the time he's given me and so i praise jesus and praise um <clears throat> god for every morning that his grace gives me so well how 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 what 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 do you have what are you dealing with cyber and um how do you know or how long have you been dealing with it so when i was a kid i don't know about 15 i started having allergy issues um and it'd start breaking out in hives and typically when i take antibiotics because i would get really sick every year um, and get to the point where I'd have pneumonia. Typically, that was around winter time, and so the doctors blew it off to seasonal blah, 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 or allergies, or I've seen hundreds of doctors, and I mean, I've even had doctors tell me that if I just ate some pineapple, fresh pineapple every day, it would solve all my problems. <clears throat> I'm not kidding. I paid that doctor $250 to tell me pineapple would solve my problems. That was about 15 years ago. Um, needless to say, <clears throat> we fired that doctor, and <clears throat> he was a moron. Um, and so, the problems got worse. I'd have more allergy issues, more sinus issues, more headaches, more pain, uh, typically caused by stomach issues, and then <clears throat> inflammation and mucus, and the mucus would then turn into coughing, and then the coughing would turn into pneumonia, and then I would, I'd miss school. Um, during high school, I maxed out all my sick days. I, I was thrown off sports teams because I missed too many days of school. Um, and the, the teachers didn't care. You know, the teachers just thought you were lazy. Just like everybody saying learn to code thinks you're lazy um, if you don't. And so I started seeing more and more doctors then. When I got into my early 20s, I got a a food poisoning um at a restaurant that was closing um closed that month and i got i was actually out golfing on my first golf trip 
and we were on the fifth hole, and <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Dumb and Dumber, but my my stomach just exploded. I, I luckily was able to get in the golf cart and go to the outdoor um, bathroom that they have, but um, I, it just, my stomach just, you know, blew up, and I, they thought my appendix had burst, so I went to the the ER and they did tests and I went to the doctors and I, the appendix hadn't burst and um, they said, well, it's milk, you know, and then the next year they said, well, it's gluten. And then the next year they said, well, it's tomatoes. And the next year they said, well, it's, and every time they would say that, they would give me a prescription with some pills and I would go home, and I'd take the pills, and then I'd get really sick. Like, I'd be laying on the floor in the fetal position for days. Um, at one point, I was taking, you know, 6 to 12 Benadryl a day just to keep the roaming um, rashes and hives um, to a minimum. So I'd have massive hives and rashes roaming around my body, um, and when they're roaming, that, that's how you know that it's something in your system, not something you're touching. So, of course, there could be fungal and <clears throat> other issues that could cause problems, and you could get allergic reaction to them maybe where you live. That's pretty common. However, because they moved around, um, and they were typically only when I was taking the doctor's medicine, um, it started to lead to what what the fuck, you know, an illogical pain. I've uh, been seen hundreds of doctors. Um, at that point, I was about five to ten years in to this nightmare. <clears throat> it affected my work. Um, affects being able to do a eight to five when you're spending eight hours every morning in debilitating pain, laying on the floor, or laying in bed, walking back and forth. Um, crying and moaning and wailing. It's not really a good way to show up to work. And so I've lost, I think, pretty much every job I've had um, that was a normal job because I was too sick to show up. And after a while of being too sick, it was, you know, they just got rid of me. That also means keeping insurance, getting insurance to pay the bills, um, has never worked. The insurance companies have never paid for my stuff. They deny that it's an issue. The doctors say it's in your brain. Um, just excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse of bullshit. Um, and so let's get to, well, <clears throat> well, how did you find out and, and what happened? Um, and so one of those times I'd gone to the ER and got, I they gave me medicines, you know, three or four medicines. Um, I, at one point I had a, I've had tons of doctors, like family phys physicians and some specialists. And um, at one point they gave me a whole bunch of medicine for different things. <clears throat> and it made me deathly ill. Um, and so I'd been to the ER, I'd gotten IVs, I'd gotten meds, I'd stabilized, and they came home. And then I I um, was trying to have my um, vitamins, you know, one of the things that mom always says, make sure you got your vitamins because, oh, you're sick because you don't take enough vitamins, <clears throat> you know. And so I had some gummy bear vitamins, and I hadn't eaten much that day, um because I'd been so sick, <clears throat> I took the vitamin, the gummy bear vitamins, and it put me on the floor. Within an 20 minutes, I was um, just insane pain. And so <clears throat> because of that incident, I started to ask the question, well, what the hell is in a vitamin that's causing me <clears throat> this massive reaction? And it turns out it was the pork. Um, all of the pills that the doctors had been giving me every time I'd show up to the hospital are made of pork. They have pork casings and the vaccines and the antibiotics and everything that <clears throat> I had been getting from the medical industry, 99.99% of it was full of animal product and pork. 
And so very quickly I started to connect the dots that, wait a second, there's something wrong here. Um, maybe I have a pork allergy. And so I started to do research and I started to cut out um, pork from my diet. And sh sure enough, you know, the biggest complaint I had when I had these problems is it felt like um, there was a hole in my stomach and, and my stomach was dragging on the floor. So my, my stomach felt like it was outside my body. It was so empty. It was such a, a hole um, that pain and it, it was so empty that and nothing could fill that emptiness in my in my stomach and that pain was just so horrific and when you go and you look up pork allergy that's actually the common statement that's the common feeling um, and so pretty quickly I could identify because I'd been telling people I was having this empty feeling and this horrible horrible um, pain um, and so that started to connect the dots. Now, let's fast forward. You know, I was 20 then. So that was 20 years ago. That was in 2004-ish. So 20 years later, here comes the CDC finally putting out this post in 2003. No, I'm sorry, 2023. So last year, um, they put out this post, and lo and behold, look at this. Not only did they know this was happening, but they ignored it, and they suspect hundreds of thousands of cases. In some places, they say millions of cases of people that have been infected by ticks um, that have what I have and don't know it. <clears throat> so, and this is worldwide. Um this is only talking about the U.S., but the problems worldwide. So AGS is a tick bite that I got when I was a kid. I um, spent a lot of time in the forest. And I had lots of tick bites. And, you know, we all watch, watch out for Lyme disease. But nobody told you about this. Um, the CDC knew about it. The CDC refused to tell us about it or tell the doctors about it. Um, and so every time you would go look and you'd try to find out this information, it was either buried and really difficult to find or didn't exist at all because they didn't want a, you know, they didn't want the public to freak out that, oh, ticks are going to get them. So they just sat on it and let people like me suffer for three decades. And you say, oh, really? Well, here it is. Um, healthcare providers, knowledge regarding AGS, United States, 2022, updated 2023. Um, and it pretty much just goes through and says <clears throat> all of these things. And, hey, oh, the doctors don't know what the hell they're talking about. The doctors refuse to do the research and do the uh, correct you know, stuff. So a uh, total of 1,500 surveyed, including 1,000, 250 for kids. Overall, 65% working in uh, blah, blah, blah. Approximately only 16. It, it's insane how few doctors know what the fuck they're talking about. Now, I had also had a wife at that point that was dealing with fibromyalgia and still is. And so we had been seeing lots of doctors for her for the fibromyalgia. And this is nothing compared to fibromyalgia research. And we have doctors that you would say, hey, we think we have this. Would you please go do continuing education research on this so that you can best help us? And the doctors would flat out tell us to our face, no, I don't do that. They would tell us to our face that they would not go do any continuing research or learn anything new from when they got out of school to help us when we directly are telling them that we believe this is what's causing our problems. So we fired, you know, as many of those doctors that were bad doctors as we could, but we live in a small town. And at some point, now you're just doctor shopping and now you're a chronic pain patient that's just moving from doctor to po doctor to get pills and you're just a pill junkie and so now they're calling you a pill junkie now they're calling you all of these horrible names and treating you like i've had doctors 
call me a pill junkie to my face. But did those doctors know anything about this, take any time to research it, or do anything for my my background and to, to learn about anything new to help me? Their, their job, their number one job, what I pay them for. No. None of them. Not a single one. I had a PA about 15 years ago in a um, ER. He was a traveling PA, just got out of school. And out of the hundreds of doctors I've seen, he was the only one that had any idea or inkling that it was an allergy issue. Um, but, of course, I only got to see him for five minutes one time at an ER. And so none of the other doctors, of course, listen to him because he's just a PA and they don't, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. The doctors know what they're talking about. And so the doctors continue to fail, fail me and fail me. Now we're talking... You know, tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical care. Um, and every single one of them failed. Not not only did they fail, but not, not a single one of them other than that PA even really tried to help. Um, they I would have been just as good throwing a dart at a dartboard with med- medicine on it or symptoms. Um, and so that's my experience with the medical industry and, uh, figuring this out. Well, now that I know that this is an issue, the problem is, is that everybody experiences the issue a little different in their reactions. And there's not a lot of research and studies going on to help solve these problems. And so, um, I deal with debilitating stomach and pain every morning. I can't take pills um one because i would have to actually open the pill casing up and put the pill insides into my own vegan pill casing because most of the pharmacies where i live don't have a vegan option so i have to make my own pill casings um in one of my previous issues i had to get some teeth pulled and so this was a huge nightmare and that doctor tried to force me just to take the medicine um, without a pill casing. And he kept saying, well, just put it in some yogurt. And I kept saying, I can't have any fucking yogurt. And he would he treated me like trash. He's, he's one of the most horrible doctors I've run into. Um, we should give him a, a call out because he, he's just such a scumbag. And so... Uh, it it's to that point where the doctors don't have any fucking clue what they're talking about. Um, yeah, it's this guy, Dr. Knox. <clears throat> His big thing was, I've got 30 years of experience, he'd kept saying. He's the one that said I was a pill junkie. Um, he left a uh, a piece of the tooth in the socket for five days. And so for five days, I was just crying in pain. I can't take very much medicine of any kind. And the medicine I can take, I just have to, I I fly through because I'm in so much pain trying to maintain it. And so, yeah, he just, to my face, called me a pill junkie. When I went in to get the, um, this done, this operation done, the first thing I told him is, hey, I've got this issue. I'm allergic to pork, um... And I can't have any of these animal products. And it's a it's a life and death issue. And he laughed at me. He literally laughed and said, well, I'm not going to put any gummy bears or any pork in your mouth or any of this stuff. And he, he laughed to my face. So that was a pre-consul. He went home. He did his fucking research. Um came back to me you know the next appointment and said oh I'm so sorry yeah uh you're right all of the things that I would have used on you are animal products so the stitches are animal product the meds are animal have animal product in them Um, and so there is a whole protocol that he had to do to not kill me let me rephrase that there's a whole protocol that the dentist doing oral surgery to move 
remove some teeth had to do to not kill me. And when I went in and told him that in the very first place that you need to be aware of this, he laughed at me. Because he has 30 years of experience. Well, keep in mind, this has been out here for 30 fucking years. Millions of people affected. And this douchebag doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about and laughs at you. So I have a horrible experience. Five days of nightmare pain. Just ten. Crying and crying and crying. And so I try to get some antibiotics. I can't take the antibiotics that I normally suggest. i got to take something for kids like a liquid. And he scolds me and throws a fit because he has to do some work on a Sunday so I can get some relief. And throughout the whole process, just a pure scumbag. This is about the same re- experience I've had with every doctor I've seen. Not one or two, but 99.9999% of doctors and medical staff I've seen have been pure, unadulterated scumbags. And treated me like I was a pill junkie, um that just wanted some meds. Uh, To be clear, because the meds caused me so much problem, I don't want their meds, and I tell them that up front. I use cannabis for my pain relief because the meds are all dietary. You go into your stomach, and they cause me horrible, 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 horrible pain. So I tell them, I don't want your fucking meds. What I really want is for you to not kill me and to get through this process without you causing me more problems. And what do they do? They cause me more problems over and over because they are scumbags. And so the best day of my life in the last 25 years was firing all of the medical staff and getting rid of them. Um, I switched to cannabis for medical relief that God's given us. Um, However, when I did that, I lost most of my church family. I lost most of my friends. Um, The people that I went to school with were hyper-religious. Um, and so using cannabis is living in a, and living in sin in the Christian community and it's evil and bad and, and, and horrible and their God isn't big enough for cannabis and grace and cannabis relief. Um, and, but their God is big enough for all those doctors to be scumbags and to feed me their poisons and their pork. You know, the Bible's really clear about pork. It doesn't say anything about cannabis, but yet cannabis is illegal and pork isn't. Now, to be clear, where I live, cannabis is legal, um, recreational, and medically. However, I have to pay 60% tax to get it. I have to drive two hours to be able to afford it because there's a monopoly where I live, and so the cost to get cannabis that relieves my pain where I live um, costs three times what it does if I drive two hours. The problem is driving that two hours is through a really dangerous uh, mountain pass that lots of people die in. And so I have to literally risk my life driving through a mountain to get meds, to get relief, because the doctors poisoned me for 30 freaking years. And now my system is so messed up that there isn't a good solution. Um, and then I have to pay 60% taxes on top of it, which is about $8,000 a year. So I, I have to pay $8,000 a year in cannabis meds. I can't get health insurance to cover it. I can't even get health insurance. Um, Then I have to pay taxes on top of that. Plus, I pay taxes at the door when I get it, and I have to drive two hours in the gas and all of that to get it. That's just to get relief that's not from the medical industry. Because everything from the medical industry makes me much sicker, and they don't give a fuck. They're not going to help me. They're not going to give me um, a solution. So... 
that's my life in a nutshell. Um, through all out of that, I, you know, I just have to praise Jesus. I'm still on this planet, and I'm still get ticking and ticking. No pun. Um, and I'm still functional uh, more than a lot of people. However, I'm only, you know, forty percent functional. Um, my brain works great, which is why. I feel blessed to be able to do Minecraft dev and sit at a computer and not be forced to try to work eight to five. But um, a lot of people ask, well, yeah, why are you here all the time? Or why aren't you out living your life? Well, that's that's why I can't travel. Um, traveling in a car, that two hour travel in a car is miserable. There's a lot of times I cry driving that distance because it's so horrifyingly painful to drive through the mountains. Um, with your stomach at a, you know, eight to 10 pain level. Uh, but you know, the medical industry doesn't give a fuck about you as a customer or person. They only want to pay their bills and go home to their nice house and forget about the hells of the world. Uh, you can read the list of symptoms, you know, um, you too could get this with a single tick bite. Doesn't matter where you're at in the world. It is worse in some areas, um, you know, mainly where there's more ticks, but <clears throat> there's not really a place you're not going to find them. It's pretty much spread everywhere. Now you can get it as kids as well. Remember, kids spend the most time out in the forest just playing, playing in the bushes. Um, that's really a quick talk about, uh, a lot of people don't understand, you know, when I say pork is in 80 to 90% of foods, people don't realize that. So anything that has a preservative that doesn't go in the fridge has pork in it, most likely. So that's eye drops, lotions, hand soaps, body soaps, shampoos, um, deodorants, anything with an aerosol typically, um, that's in... Most your foods, I mean, you wouldn't believe how many foods, most candy, if you're a vegan and you go do your Halloween candy trip and you're eating that candy, you know, it's like 90% of candy has pork in it. It's called pork candy for a reason. Marshmallows, bacon, <clears throat> most of the seasoning you get from restaurants has pork in it, so... Even pepper and seasoning cause me problems now because my system's so messed up. So if I go down to a restaurant and I haven't eaten there before, or even if I have, if they use a seasoning they haven't used before, maybe they have a new chef or they uh, they change stuff up, just the seasoning change will cause me problems. So I can't eat anywhere um, unless I know what kind of seasoning they use. It's kind of depressing. <clears throat> But the only solution when you're in a situation like this is faith and believing in Jesus that he put me on this planet for a reason and I have a purpose and the goal. And my job today when I get up is to make the best of each purpose and goal and person that he brings into my life and do my best to affect others for the better while I'm on this planet. Um, and I don't know that that's going to be very long. I sure plead every day for more time um, and try to make the best of it. So that's kind of a 30-minute overview of CyberX and CyberX's life and dealing with AGS and, um, you know, scumbag doctors and all the problems that I've had to deal with out there. Um, you know, for a long time, this was an illogical pain. There was no... There was no hope. There was no solution. There was nothing. Um, there was... There was nothing but doctors guessing, and I bet a lot of you are out there in the same boat where you have pain and problems and the doctors just guess if you even get to the doctors. So a few things I would check is I'd definitely check and get an allergy um, test. So I'd get a food allergy test just right away. They're like $80. You can mail them in. The next thing I'd do is I'd get a fungal allergy test and make sure that you're not susceptible to the fungus and the fungus uh, the fungal uh, growing in your um, home 
that's another um, between the two of these. <coughs> I think this is what <coughs> a lot <coughs> a lot of people are dealing with. <coughs> So, if you're dealing with chronic headaches and chronic abdominal pain, I would start here and make sure it's not environmental because most likely you have a genetic susceptibility. It's about 20% of the world population. So, I would start here, I would get a mold test, and I'd make sure that you're not dealing with your environment first. Once you're done making sure it's not your environment and it's not exposure, in your workplace, your home, or your school. Then I would go and I would get the food allergy test. I think every child should have a food allergy test and then once you become an adult you need to do it again because your system changes. And this will give you a good idea of what things you're allergic to. You know, a lot of people are allergic to pepper. A lot of people are allergic to calcium carbonate, um, tomatoes, countless things that cause them severe problems, but they don't know it. Um, calcium carbonate is a really big one. It's what's found in Tums, and it's also in a ton of food that say healthy for you. The problem is calcium carbonate is a medicine, and so while in small amounts it does stop heartburn if you're having rare heartburn, if you get a lot of it, it causes heartburn, and then it causes stomach problems and IBS and indigestion problems. And so one of the things I had to cut out of my system really early was calcium carbonate because it was causing me a horrible amount of pain because of the damage that had already been done to my system. And so removing that helped with a lot of pain as well. Um, the problem is calcium carbonate is in Cheerios. You know, like Honey Nut Cheerios has calcium carbonate. Anything that says healthy on it, they've snuck it in over the last decade. It didn't used to be in there. So now you're getting medicine in your normal food. So if you eat two or three bowls of Cheerios, you've gotten way too much calcium carbonate. Then you get heartburn. You go take a Tums to stop the heartburn. The Tums causes more heartburn. So you go to the doctor to get IBS or um, indigest indigestion medicines or, or heartburn medicine that's over or, you know prescription and then it starts to do more damage to your system because the problem was never that you didn't have enough medicine the problem is you have way too much and once you start cutting out calcium calcium carbonate you'll start seeing a reduction in a lot of those issues as well so a lot of problems people are feeling today is just straight diet because the food industry has changed what's in our food without telling you and the FDA is a joke. So calcium carbonate, if you start reading the labels, is one of the biggest ones I found for a lot of people's pain and heartburn. So if you're dealing with daily heartburn, you've got to cut that out to start with. And you can go look. Go look on your Tums uh, container. It says calcium carbonate. A whole bunch of antacids have it. And then go look <clears throat> on all your food containers. If you're doing something from a bakery that does not go in the fridge, calcium carbonate a lot of times has been is being used as the stabilizer. And so it's in a whole bunch of stuff. You don't realize it. And that's also one of those cause and effects. So that's probably enough for me. This gives you a good idea of what I'm dealing with. Sorry it's so long. It's a, it's a lot in-depth stuff. Um, and I hope that if you're dealing with these things, that first, find Jesus. Find faith. you got to connect with the creator of the, the universe um, to deal with stuff like this. Because a lot of times there isn't going to be a solution. I don't think there's a solution for me. I don't think there's an option. My best option is to make the best of every day I have. If you got COVID and you have COVID lung symptoms or you got the vax, now you've got vax system, you know, vax issues, vax damage, um, there's not going to be a solution for a long time in my opinion because it's an abnormal thing that humans caused. We created those. So I would <clears throat> find the creator first, find faith, find your strength in that, and then use that motivation of every day and minute you have on the planet is your last, you know. And that's a good motivator to keep going every day and make the best of it. 
um, having something looking forward into the future is always nice. Having something you're doing in six months or eight months to just keep your eyes focused forward is great. But my goal is to live 100% in this moment right now today because I don't know if I get tomorrow. So that's it. That's me. That's CyberX from Outlandishly Crafted. <clears throat> and as always, you know, I'll take any support you want. I, uh... It's been very difficult for me to come to grips with asking for help or needing <clears throat> assistance or saying I can't do that. Man, that's hard. <clears throat> it's very hard to say I'm too sick to do X. Um, or I'm not, I'm not physically able to do that. <clears throat> and so... Yeah, if you find my guides or any of this stuff helpful, <clears throat> you know, every day financially is a struggle because it's hard to work. Um, and even if I went on Social Security or Medicare, Medicaid, whatever, um, that doesn't give you enough money to even pay the bills and survive. So you have to do that and work. Uh, so <clears throat> there's always that split side of this of... Now, how do you survive in the meanwhile of being sick? And and how do you, you know, do you then just become a limp log and a burden to everybody else? Or do you try to use that time to educate and spread your skills to the world? I've tried to pick that one. Um, in some cases, hoping that the world would then reciprocate and throw some money back my way to help, you know, mitigate those things. <coughs> which just hasn't happened. And... I think that's a hard sell uh, overall anyway, so I don't know. But if you find that you uh, have an abundance of resources and, and money and wealth, I, there's always a lot of sick people out there that could definitely use it if you're just sitting on it, you know. There's definitely people who could do more with it today than it just sitting in a bank losing value. Um, but yeah, once again, this has been a... Uh, talk on AGS and being sick in 2024 and the medical industry, uh, modern medicine. Modern medicine is great if you have a common issue. If you break your leg, modern medicine is phenomenal. Um, if you show up with diabetes, modern medicine's okay. If you show up with some illogical pain, you're a scumbag junkie who just wants some pills that's 2024 so thanks for listening and uh if you got any questions or maybe you've dealt with the same things, maybe you're dealing with the same things right now you know put them in the comment comments you know i i don't even know if youtube will put this video out to everybody or because we talked about certain subjects if they're gonna ban it and block it <clears throat> um that seems to be the mo which is one reason i haven't done this talk before is i don't want my channel getting taken down because I'm talking about the, the medical industry, you know, not positively. And in my experience, that comes with a harsh punishment uh, if you speak out against the current industry. So, don't hate me. Um, this is just my experience and what I've lived through and seen in the last... Remember, I started when I was 15 and <clears throat> 40... 43 <clears throat> it's a lot of years to be suffering an, an illogical pain with the doctors telling you you're a scumbag so yeah thanks for watching I'm Cyberx outlandishly crafted and this has been illogical pain <laughs>